Hey guys, so we're gonna be trying some new makeup today. I felt like there was maybe like a little bit of a, a dry spot in there, and maybe like in the beginning of July, there were a few new things or whatever, and I thought, oh wow, it's really quiet this summer. And then <laughs> all of a sudden, there were all of these new releases. Hey guys, editing Michelle here. So I'm editing this video and I noticed I was playing around with my microphone placement and you can see it. You can see it sticking out of the bottom corner of my Frame. So just ignore that, it's just the microphone. Okay, bye. I have two foundations here. So I have the new Lancome Tenny Doll Ultra Wear Care and Glow, and I have it in the shade 105W. And then I purchased the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, I have it in the shade three. Now I put out a poll on my YouTube community tab and the Hourglass won out, but it wasn't like, you know, 90, 10 or whatever. It was like, you know, 60, 40, like it was relatively close. So I think today I'll use the hourglass because more of you are interested in the hourglass. And then what I'm gonna do, you know, for tomorrow or uh, the next day, I'm gonna do like a side by side because a lot of, I feel like the a lot of what they're calling out for these foundations are very, very similar. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting to kind of try them together. Like I'll put one on half of my face, one on the other. So today we'll be using the new hourglass ambient uh, foundation, the Natasha Denona Mini Bronze Palette. Very excited for that. The Givenchy Prism Libre Highlighter in the shade 11. This is limited edition. I think this is part of their really small kind of like capsule summer collection. Um, and then we're going to be trying Poppy King, her new brand, her, the first release from the new brand is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so Lip Centric by Poppy King is this lipstick line. This particular shade is Silver Bullet. I hauled this for you guys. It is, it's so cool. So, so cool. So you definitely want to stay until I get to my lips. That is for sure. So let's go ahead and start with Hourglass. So it comes in this glass bottle. I'm assuming there's a pump. Yep, there's a pump dispenser. And again, I got it in the shade three. I'm hoping that will work. So the description of this on the Sephora site, it says it's a weightless liquid foundation that delivers buildable medium coverage with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours. The coverage is medium. The finish is natural. The formulation is liquid. Um, it has light diffusing pigments, blurring spheres, white tea extract, vitamin E, and antioxidants. It is meant to be a transfer resistant formula, resistant to humidity, sweat, flawless looking coverage that stays in place, blah, blah, blah. Um, a lot of that is what made me think of the Lancome Foundation because that also is supposed to be transfer resistant. Uh, the wear is supposed to be up to 24 hours versus the 16 hours. Uh, my wear test for the both of them will not be neither 16 nor 24 hours long, probably be more like 12 hours. And that's it. So let me uh, get out a foundation brush here. I think they released a foundation brush uh, with this and I was of course tempted to get it, but I do have Sonia G's new mini Kayaki set. So I figured I'm sure I have a brush that I can use with this foundation without having to purchase a new one. And Beautylish was kind enough in sending me this mini Kayaki set. So there are five brushes in this set and there is the jumbo base brush. So all of these brushes are new designs except for this jumbo base. So we've got one that is one I'm so excited for. This is the jumbo worker and I will get to this in just a second. Um, we have the soft face. Ooh, this is so nice. The hair length is long, so I thought it was going to be really soft, but you know, all of Sonia G's, um, or most of Sonia, well, no, all of Sonia G's brushes, I feel like have a lot of body. You know, they have a lot of um, like purpose to the brushes where a lot of brushes are so soft. Sometimes I feel like they just aren't very effective. All of Sonia G's brushes are very, very effective despite them looking kind of wispy. This has a lot of like body to it. And then we have a detail brush. Ooh, this is nice. It's like a blender brush, but it has a really kind of pronounced tip there. That's lovely. And then, ooh, this is really lovely. This is a crease brush. So this looks similar to her Crease Pro, but the hair length seems a little bit longer. But again, it's not floppy. There's still a lot of body to this brush. Ooh, so exciting. All right, so I'm gonna use the Jumbo Base Brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. I'm gonna shake this up and let's pump some out. I'm just starting with like one full pump there. So it's not really running down my hand. So it has a really nice kind of creamy texture. I'm gonna grab just a little bit 
And I think this shade, hopefully this shade will work for me. The base of this particular shade, again, I have shade number three, is a little um, yellow based. And I'm just gonna apply it to half of my face here so we can do a little comparison. And I prefer a more light, light medium coverage foundation, so I'm not using too much. I definitely wanna see that I can kind of shear this out and not be kind of forced to put on a medium coverage. Yeah, well, it's applying beautifully with this brush, which is good. I think the shade is fine. I usually go for neutral, so if uh, the foundation has like a little bit of a peach or yellow or pink undertone, like a little bit. I can usually get away with it. Um, it's just if it's too much or if the coverage is too high and it's like very obvious, then it usually won't work for me. But um, I think this one is actually pretty good. This one is like a really nice match for my neck. The finish is very beautiful. It is very, very natural. I see just a little bit of... Uh, radiance there, but it's not anything uh, overly glowy. It's not um, what sort. I don't look, you know, sweaty or greasy or anything like that. And I do have SPF on underneath here. I don't have any primer. I felt like the SPF was kind of uh, gooey enough. <laughs> so, um, and I have very dry skin. Uh, so I like to make sure that my skin is very well moisturized before I put foundation on. Yeah, it looks nice. And I do feel like, you know, I put a very light layer on. I still have that much left on my hand after that one pump. And I would say the coverage is like a light medium. I don't feel like we've gotten up to a medium just yet. Yeah, it's very natural looking. So far, so good. It's sitting nice on my nose. Let me go ahead and apply it to the rest of my face. And then we can kind of zoom in and take a closer look. All right, so there it is applied all over my face. I do feel like if I needed to, I could maybe, like this shade is gonna be perfect for me in the fall winter. I feel like now I could even go up maybe to the four or, or however they uh, number them. I think I could go up like one shade, but I think this is fine. Uh, you know, I'll be throwing on some bronzer or whatever, it'll be fine. Um, I do really like the finish of this foundation. It really has a very beautiful, nice, natural kind of glow. Yeah, oh, before I forget, let's go ahead and zoom in. So I'll start at my forehead and just go down to my chin. But everything looks, everything looks really nice. It's wearing really nicely around my eyes. It's not making my under eyes look dry. Uh, the tip of my nose looks good, smooth. It's not like kind of caking up or doing anything weird. And yeah, along my jawline, around my mouth, everything's looking nice. So far, so good. So Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. Okay, I think I need a little bit of concealer. I just feel like I look a little shadowy right there. So I'm just gonna use my Dior Backstage concealer in one end and just dab a little bit around there. And I am so excited to be using this jumbo worker brush from this set. So this is a brand new shape to Sonia G. And this is one of my favorite shapes of brushes. In fact, it's like a little bit smaller than my Trish McAvoy Deluxe Blender, as you can see, but it's the same idea and it's, it's just such a great all-purpose shape brush. And I know it doesn't look that special, but this shape is not exactly easy to find. And I actually came across it in the Giorgio Armani line first a gazillion years ago. And it's, it's wonderful for uh, foundation. It's great for concealer, but like foundation around your nose. If you have a cream shadow that you want to like lay down all over your lid, it's great for that. Um, it's great for like touching up. It's just such... A, like handy dandy little brush shape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use it to blend in the concealer here. And it's definitely one of those brushes that you can use like this, like to tap, to sweep. It's pinched, so it's um, a flatter shape, but it's not super flat, like this Tina Earnshaw uh, brush that I love. This is pinched, right, it ends flat, but look at how flat that is. So that's why I find this to be a little bit more um, versatile. Also really great for like cream products, like cream highlight, um, cream contour. It's just really, really handy dandy. So I'm so glad <laughs> that Sonia came out with uh, a brush shape like this, just one of my favorites. Okay, for bronzer, I don't have new bronzer, so I'm just gonna use my newest bronzer, which is the House Labs. This is the Powder Sculpt Velvet Bronzer in Light Level 2. That's the shade name. And just gonna, Kind of warm up my face here. 
This is such a good bronzer, easy to use. It builds up slowly. So, you know, you don't run into the danger of like overdoing it. It's really lovely. And this light level two is just such a nice neutral color. All right, so bronzer is applied. Now, I think I wanna try this Givenchy Prism Libre highlighter. Now, it um, looks pink, so maybe it could be a lightweight blush. I guess we'll see. So it has this really fun limited edition cover. It's mirrored with the Givenchy like that key, Greek key design on there. And let's see what we've got. So it's got a little safety seal. Let me pull that off. And this is a difficult product to swatch. So what I'm going to do is replace the cap and then turn it upside down and just see what happens. All right. So I do have some in the cap. I have some in the container here. I'm just going to pick some up with my finger. Oh, I can see now why they call it a highlight. Okay, it definitely, it's a pink highlight. <laughs> wow. This may be better used as a blush topper for me because it's so pink. It's so, so pink. So I think what I'll do, let me think, let me think. I'm gonna use one of the Victoria Beckham um, cheek poshy, what are, what are these called? I almost said poshy cheek sticks. They're the cheeky posh stick, wow. The Cheeky Posh Stick in Fame. This is uh, one of her new shades. It's like a, a deep kind of mauve shade. And because this doesn't really have that much of a sheen to it, I think it'll be nice to use as a base, possibly. And I did want to kind of put this on for you guys. So I'm going to use my uh, mini base brush from Sonia G. This is from her first <laughs> mini Kayaki set. And I'm just going to glide over this Victoria Beckham blush. And again, this is in the shade Fame. The other new one that I just recently hauled, that one is Fever. That's like the really bright orangey red. Um, I think this one is probably better for what I'm doing today. Really pretty. It kind of gives you uh, like a raspberry toned cheek. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, let me apply to this cheek. All right, so that blush is applied. That's really pretty. I was kind of on the fence about this shade because it is, um, I think, pretty deep for my skin tone. But again, just apply it lightly, kind of sheer it out. It's really pretty. All right, let's go ahead and apply this Givenchy highlighter on top of the blush. It's kind of a blush topper. I'm gonna use this new soft face brush from Sonia G. I'm just gonna dip it into what I kind of poured out in the container here and just, just kind of pressing it on. Ooh, oh God, that's pretty. Ooh, that's really pretty. Mm. It kind of turns, I feel like, a daytime blush into an evening blush. <laughs> yes, I do think I like this as a blush topper. I think it would just be too pink for me in terms of a highlight. I like highlights, as you guys know, like more of a champagne, a little peach maybe. Um, so, wow, that's really beautiful. So that is the new limited edition Prism Libre Hy Highlighter from Givenchy, number 11. And I think the last time I checked, it's still available on Sephora, but these like limited edition powders from Givenchy usually sell out pretty quickly. All right, and for highlight, I'm not sure that I need highlight, you know, with that blush topper, it's really pretty. With this, um, foundation it's leaving like a very nice like subtle glow but i did want to demo the new victoria beckham uh reflect highlighter stick in pearl because this is another product that i um, hauled for you guys but i didn't try on so here it is and let's do a quick swatch here oh it's really gorgeous so glossy looking i am going to just use my finger pick up a little bit and just kind of dab on my cheek here. Oh, that's really gorgeous. It's so Victoria Beckham. She's the one that I feel like coined the term sweaty sexy. And <laughs> this kind of gives you that like, that sweaty, that sweaty glow. Now, when I swatched this for you guys, when I hauled it, it kind of reminded me of one of the Chanel um, sculpting stick. So I took that out. I just wanted to do a little comparison. So, you know, Chanel has these highlight sticks. This is in sculpting and I am going to swatch it right next to 
the Victoria Beckham. It's a little bit less wet looking, so, wow, that's gonna be hard to see, but here's the Chanel and here's the Victoria Beckham. See how the Victoria Beckham looks a little bit wetter than the Chanel, but I feel like the shine is very, very similar, very similar, so. Yeah, I would just say, I mean, it's just a difference in uh, formulation, I would say, with that kind of emollience. The Victoria Beckham has like a, a little extra emollience there. All right, I'm just gonna use my Dior Dior Show Onset Brow Gel in dark brown. You guys are gonna get so sick of this product too, just like the Tom Ford Fiber Brow Gel. <laughs> and on to the Natasha Denona Mini Bronze Palette. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for this palette. I know we're not doing anything earth shattering here, right? But this is such a great kind of basic palette. We've got four mattes and then we've got that um, metallic shade. So here are swatches of all five. We've got Russet, Flesh, Gobi, Bronze Foil, and then Tough. I think the labeling on the back of this, um, at least the one that I have, is a, just a little bit off. The bronze foil, I feel like, should be 437M instead of CM, because CM stands for uh, creamy matte, and M stands for metallic, and this is very clearly a metallic shade. Anyway, um, I'm just going off of the back in terms of the names. So, interestingly enough, I have a really cool toned cheek, and I'm going to have a really cool toned lip, but this is definitely a warmer toned um, palette, but I think I'm going to focus on these two shades and the metallic shade. Maybe this one. This one I think is just a little bit too warm for me today. So I'm going to use this crease brush from Sonia G from that mini Kayaki set. I'm going to go into this lightest matte shade here. This is Flesh. And oh, it's pretty deep. Okay. I feel like it's coming off. Sorry, I'm just trying to compare. I feel like it's a little bit deeper applied than it is in the pan, right? This almost looks like this shade. Okay, good to know, good to know. Could also be because I am super pale. I'm pretty much just applying this all over because it is a little bit deeper than I thought it would be. And it is very, very warm. I mean, this whole palette is very warm, but yeah, I feel like this one is warming up even more than it looks in the pan, right? This kind of looks like a pretty neutral sort of beige, and on my lid, it looks pretty orangey. Yeah, this may not have been the best uh, matchup <laughs> between eyeshadow and like the rest of my makeup, but that's okay. We're just trying stuff out. All right, I'm gonna go straight into this uh, bronze foil shade. I'm gonna use this detail brush from Sonia G's Kayaki set. This is also a lot more orangey than I thought, than it looks. Everything's kind of coming off like this tone, but it looks like these two look more neutral in the pan, right? But they're coming off very orangey. And I think I mentioned this when I talked about her bronze palette. Did I talk about that? Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, I feel like, and I'm not, I'm not, correcting her, anything like that. I mean, Natasha Denona is a color genius, I think. I love her palettes and the way she pairs colors and the way she works with them. I mean, she's absolutely incredible. But I don't think these are very bronze. I think these are very copper. I just feel like a more accurate description of these shades would be copper versus bronze. And I felt that way about her big bronze palette also. All right, just going back to the crease brush, I'm picking up just a little bit of this uh, deep and matte shade. This one is... What is this one called? Russet, I think. And I just want to add a little bit to the outer corner here. I'm going to take a big uh, shadow brush. This is the Bobbi Brown Eye Sweep brush. And just going to use it with no product on there. Just kind of blend things out a little here. All right, so there is Natasha Denona. It is very orange, very, very orange. I feel like it's even more orange and I keep saying this, more orange than it appears in the pan. I'm not sure that I like that. I don't know if it's, um, if you guys are experiencing the same thing or if it's my skin tone. Um, I don't know, maybe my skin just kind of does this because uh, this happens to Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows too. They really, really warm up 
on my skin. So not sure what is causing it. It could just be what I see in the pan. It could just be my, my eyes <laughs> perceiving it differently. But now that I know that, if I want like a really orangey, coppery, warm eyeshadow palette, this is a good one to reach for. Okay, I'm just gonna use my Hourglass Eyeliner in Cave and tight line, put a little of my waterline here. Okay, just gonna curl my lashes here. I really don't like, <laughs> I don't like this combo of eyeshadow with like my cheeks. Sometimes I really don't mind a warm and cool toned mix of shades, you know, but this is not, this is not it. I think they're both a little bit too bright. You know, this is such a bright kind of pink at least with that Givenchy on top. And then this is such a bright orange. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> the products individually I think are, are fine, but yeah, not together. Um, anyway, I'm gonna use the Mob Beauty Mascara. This is, I believe their only mascara. It's in the shade black and they have this um, like hourglass shaped wand, very, um, very natural style bristles. So I think this is meant to give you a lot of volume. Of course, I have the most ridiculous puny lashes, so I think it does a pretty good job making them look hefty, right? And my lashes are definitely a little bit longer. I've been using that Lancome uh, Le Huit Hypnos Serum Infused Mascara, that one with the big glass bottle, and yeah, it's definitely given some length to my lashes for sure. All right, and now <laughs> for the piece de resistance. This is Silver Bullet from Poppy King. Now, this is what it looks like in the bullet. Looks silver, uh, but this is one of those color-changing lipsticks. Now, if you're familiar with Poppy King, she is uh, the brains behind Lipstick Queen. Uh, which I don't believe is around anymore. And she has uh, worked with a gazillion different other lipstick manufacturers. She's helped design things. She is just, um, I mean, her obsession is lipstick, of course, but she really is a true, true artisan. I had the very fortunate opportunity to meet her and she's so warm and she's so, she's just a really lovely, person and you can tell she's just this kind of like sensitive soul and I, I just adore her. So anyway, she sent this over to me and I've been playing around with it and it is such a fun color changing product. So I know a lot of color changing products that I have, lipsticks, that I've played around with like years ago. I feel like it was really hot. Probably Lipstick Queen, I think, made that a really hot thing. Um, but they always kind of change to like a plummy mauve kind of color. This is like a bubblegum pink. It's so cool. But what I love is you could really, really customize like the depth of the shade. You can, you know, very easily like build it up. But what I like to do is apply it just in a very sheer way. So you get this really nice um, silvery, frosty finish with this like pink that just kind of keeps developing over the day. Let me just apply it, hold on. <laughs> so that's just like two swipes, like one across, one back. And I'm just smushing my lips together. Isn't that just the most fun pink and just a hint of that silver in there? I just think it's so much fun, but it's a really fun lipstick that I think a woman of my age can wear without feeling kind of silly. It's really, really beautiful. And what's cool is this pink will develop all day long, very, very slowly. And it's not like it turns like, you know, super bright, crazy magenta, but it will get a little bit brighter. Um, the silver will kind of wear away. If you're still wearing a mask, that pink ends up being kind of like a stain. So I've worn this with a mask. Um, and again, like the silver kind of wears away, but you're left with a really beautiful pink stain. It's just a really fun, fun lipstick. It's almost like it has a life of its own. It develops, it has that silver, the silver wears away, you're left with a stain. You, Of course, you can reapply it if you want a little bit more of the silver. So it's this fun kind of like organic, lipstick that kind of changes throughout the day. And 
I love it. I absolutely love it. It looks like like a fairy tale, like butterfly wing, doesn't it? Just like that sheer, you know, like when it catches it in the light, that kind of like sheer, beautiful, more of like a dragonfly wing. Just a beautiful, like subtle, but fun lipstick. I think it is a really, really, really hard combination <laughs> to get like a fun lipstick that's also chic and sophisticated and interesting and also may i add it is incredibly comfortable this formula is so moisturizing it just is super comfortable on the lips i love wearing it i love reapplying it it never feels like goopy you know how some lipsticks if you just like keep reapplying it all day it just like it builds on itself and it's not it does it's not good <laughs> this is fine it's so moisturizing so she is selling these um exclusively off of her instagram web page. So I'm going to link it down below, but it's Poppy King Lipstick, all one word, on Instagram. So if you follow her, her shop should be open today. She's like a one woman show. So, you know, if it's not today, it'll be tomorrow, but it'll be there. And this is her first release kind of back in the game. She, like I said, she was the brains behind Lipstick Queen. And then she came out with her own line, Femme de Poppy, um, that was sold at Barney's. And then Barney's, you know, went up in smoke. <laughs> still sad about it. And then Barney's like went defunct and, um, and then the pandemic hit, you know, it's just been, it's been a challenging, it's been a challenging time for everyone, I think, uh, but for lipstick entrepreneurs, for sure. So anyway, I'm so glad, so, so glad that she's back because she's one of the few people that does really, really very well thought out, interesting, fun things. Like they're not gimmicky. They're just fun. Like she's put a lot of effort into keeping, you know, makeup light and fun and just, you know, kind of getting down to what makeup should be, which is something that just, I don't know, like brings a little bit of light into your day. So anyway, this is Silver Bullet and I'm sitting here rambling because I'm hoping you can see the color develop even more. I think you can see it's like turning like even like a little bit brighter, but it's so, so much fun. So anyway, um, that is it for trying new makeup. Of course, everything will be down below in my description box. Like I mentioned, um, a link to Poppy's Instagram account, uh, links to all the products that I use today. And just to talk one last minute about this hourglass, I think so far it has been really, really lovely. Now I haven't added any powder, you guys probably noticed, except for that bronzer. Um, and I do feel like it's getting a little bit brighter in here. I didn't put any highlight over here. Um, I put it over my eyebrows, but not between my eyebrows. And I see quite a bit of shine there. So anyway, we're going to do a more full in-depth wear test of the hourglass versus the Lancome. Um, but so far, so good, but definitely subscribe down below if you're interested in seeing that. And let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video.